Hello folks and welcome. So today I'm going to talk about benchmarking hard drives. I have uh, two internal hard drives to compare and we can also talk about the different kinds of hard drives. Uh, maybe you're in the market of upgrading. Um, some people put uh, Linux on really old computers and some people put them on modern computers. And some people want to upgrade their hard drives because there is quite a bit um, of choices available today in 2025. I'll also show in this video how to get uh, information about your motherboard and what it can support if you're increasing your well storage. Filming in 1080, my screen res is in 4K. This is on Linux Mint 21, uh, sorry, 22.1 cinema. Uh, the subscription logo is in the corner, well over 500 videos. And for new subscribers, I highly recommend that you read my posts and the about section. Let's start with benchmarking. Type in DIS and you'll find this tool already installed. It's called Discs. You may not have explored it, but I will talk about using benchmarking tools for GNOME Disk Utility. Starting with the bottom one, this is an internally mounted solid state drive. The benchmarking tool is found here and also here. I've already benchmarked these already once today, so I'll do it again. So um, you can see that the top range on the last pass was 530 megabytes per second. And um, then you have an average read rate, write rate, and access time. When you start your benchmarking, you do have a choice of write, perform write back also. All right, so I'm going to hit that. And Hazel is our main up name user for today. So this is doing this live for you, and you can see the graph being built. So that would be the top dog of 530 megabytes per second. Average read rate was actually 478 megabytes per second. And write was 463, it was slightly lower, but close. The next one that I'm going to show you is this one. There's a huge difference on this one. That one is 5,000 or 4960. I hit 4.6 gigabytes per second versus megabytes. Average read and write. So the biggest difference on these two drives, of course, is this one is an NVMe drive and the other one is a regular solid state drive. And we're also going to talk about spinning hard drive in this video. And then we're going to talk about if you are wanting to upgrade, what kind of motherboard do you have? And maybe you need to investigate that without opening up your case or laptop. I'll show you tools to do this with. Let me first talk a little bit about So I have a very similar drive like this one in this machine, but it's not this brand. But I do have this brand actually on several other computers, including one that fits in the palm of my hand. And that computer is actually running SSH server on it. And I also use it to back up my iPhones. My data from, not the data, but the pictures and videos. Anyways. So these are very expensive, and but they achieve very high speeds. All right, this is a typical spinning hard drive. Spinning hard drives sometimes come in different, uh, how fast it spins, maybe 5,400, maybe 7,200, maybe 10,000 rounds per minute. That one is 7,200. A lot of times you won't see published data as how quickly these were, but this is your average read rate. 30 to 150 megabytes per second. That's very different from that 500 and 5,000. So generally also spinning hard drives, um, they vibrate, have a little bit of noise to them. If they're in laptops, like the two and a half inch ones would be in laptops and your laptop is sitting literally in your lap, you can probably feel a vibration. But these have moving parts, and anything that has moving parts breaks, eventually. 
Well, these don't last for either, uh, forever either, even though there's no moving parts on these. And now I'll show you the other one. Uh, a lot of different manufacturers make these, so they're competing with these. So uh, here's a cheap one. And again, I'm going to caution you to uh, when you're looking for hard drives, sometimes you get what you pay for. Okay. But nonetheless, it's just a picture that I'm showing there. I'm not showing you that for any other reason. So it's got a power supply connector and the serial ATA cable. So generally these are in plastic boxes and normally if you crack these things open, it doesn't cover the whole insides as far as the circuit board is concerned. So there are no moving parts at all in here. But uh, generally people do not crack those open. Your mounting holes are also on the sides on most of these and also on the bottoms. So you can mount these things. I don't know if they'll show a picture. Yeah, you can see the mounting holes on the side. So um, this is something that people usually replace these with. That's usually the first step they take. And again, it just depends on what model that you're looking for and how much you're willing to spend. So um, most of these, again, have the read write speed of 550 to 500 and something or even less megabytes per second. Unlike these are in seven thousands. They're a little bit higher priced also. And by the way, folks, these um, will fool you sometimes. You can have solid state drives also that are the same speed as these in this kind of a form factor. In other words, what this looks like. And generally you'll find another slot here on those. And these also come in different sizes. So again, how do we find out what is something good for our machines? Well, what type of computer do you have? Is it a tower computer or is it a laptop? If it's a laptop, a lot of times you don't want to take the screws out and find out what's in the box. But we can do something better. Type in SY and look for this tool here. You may have seen it. Maybe you've never used it. System reports. It came installed and it has been there for years for all the Linux Mint products or at least the Cinnamon desktop. So uh, that's always a good sign, but here's your system information. I also have a different method to doing that in terminal, but I'm just going to focus in on MOBO, motherboard. This one's made by ASUS. So generally, if your laptop is cheap, sometimes you won't see this. But generally, if you do have a model number here, you can highlight that. I don't really care about the revision letter currently, but we can investigate that later. Right click, copy, minimize, open up a web browser. I'll make a new tab. All right, I clicked on this earlier, that's why the line is purple. But this is what that motherboard looks like. Now, generally, you want to head over to the te technical specifications if, if you are on the official website. And you want to look for storage. So as you can see, uh, it has two chipsets in here and it's talking about those slots that those fit, fit into. And you can see the different types that it supports. And also, depending on the chipset, it's either PCIe 3 or 4. And some of these things also have lots of SATA ports. However, it also denotes that if you're going to use one of these sockets <coughs> on this particular motherboard, um, the port 5 and 6 will be disabled if you're using that one of these slots. So sometimes you need to pay attention to this part. But what I'm getting at, folks, is I got that information without opening up my computer computer case. So if you're on a laptop, this could be a benefit to you. And then you can look at the uh, information on your motherboard. Does it support what kind of storage? Does it support this? Or does it support one that looks like this, but it says serial ATA on it? Because like I said, sometimes you can see these and they'll fool you. The word NVMe is written on this one. Sometimes you'll also see ones that says SATA 3 on it. That would not be an NVMe. 
And that's generally the same speed as, um, where's this one at? Generally the same speed as these, which is about around 500 or 550. But these are very common. Again, they're a lot cheaper than these are. But if your motherboard supports these things, let me let you see what my picture looks like. That is a heat shield and the NVMe chip will fit underneath here. There's another one on here also. So they also make what they call riser cards. I'll give you an example of that. Um, we'll use Amazon also. So an NVMe riser card. Most of these are fairly inexpensive. That's if you don't have a slot on your motherboard, but you have one of these. Now here's one for $10 and you can plug in your NVMe on that port right here and then lock it down. And then you can now see the different sizes also of those NVMe's. It even says that an M2 NVMe right there and it shows you the different sizes. So a lot of them are just the long ones and you would uh, literally plug it into here and then snap on the heat sink. And this particular thing will fit on your motherboard into that slot. Also, it is uh, advisable to, to look at your motherboard to what kind of slots do you have to make this compatible. You can see that the first one there is red. The PCIe X1 is not supported versus the X4 is 8 and 16. And you generally, a lot of times you'll have two, uh, one or two or both of these on your newer motherboards. So this bracket comes in two flavors, the short for the shorter uh, consoles or tower computers, and then the big arm. And you can take these on and off. All right, so removable spare bolts. You can actually see that one has uh, lots of options and now you can see the different sizes of those cards that fit on these. So these here look like rubber pieces and you just sandwich those in here and put the heat sink on the top. That is to dissipate heat. Because some of these do get warm, especially these fast ones. That's if you, of course if you want to go that route and your motherboard supports all this. But I'm just giving you another option to think about in case you want to throw an NVMe, in case you don't have these slots in your motherboard. But maybe you do have one of these. So this is generally reserved for your graphics card or GPU. And then of course your monitor plugs into the side. And uh, you get the idea. Some things to think about. I have another method of getting the same information in terminal for you folks that enjoy terminal commands. INXI has lots of options. I've even shown videos on that. This is the one I like to use just generally when I'm filming. It gives me everything that I need. Shows me the memory. That would be RAM. It shows me the drive. Sometimes identifies the actual manufacturer and model number. So I benchmarked these for you earlier, this one and that one. The motherboard information is found at the top. Machine, MOBO. This is the same information that I had earlier using the system reports. I can also right click and copy this one. Okay. It's the same website. Different ways of getting information, but again, if you're in the market of upgrading your hard drive or benchmarking your current ones, uh, you can use the GNOME Disk Utility for benchmarking. And if you are replacing uh, your storage devices, it's a good idea to find out what your motherboard supports, whether it's a laptop or a tower computer. Thank you for watching.